What you see here is a so-called boost converter that I built in a previous video. Back then I explained in detail the job of each component in the circuit, so that the final product was capable of boosting a low 5V voltage to a high 30V voltage and even keep the output voltage stable when the load changes. This was possible because the AD Tiny microcontroller constantly monitored the output voltage and increased the duty cycle when more current on the output was necessary and decreased the duty cycle when less current was necessary. I have to say that it was a decent boost converter prototype, but as always when creating microcontroller projects, people started asking whether designing a boost converter without a microcontroller is possible. So in this episode of we can create circuits without a microcontroller, but usually that does not make a whole lot of sense, I will try to create my own boost converter without utilizing any kind of microcontroller and show you that using one instead would have made things a lot easier. Let's get started. This video is sponsored by JLC PCB. One fact about them. Customers can track every PCB production process through their online accounts. Upload your Gerber files to order professional PCBs for only $2. The classical circuit for boost converter looks like this. When the MOSFET is turned on, the coil builds up its magnetic fields and once the MOSFET is turned off, this energy is pumped into the output capacitor and load in order to boost the voltage. Pretty standard stuff. If I would build up the circuits with some off the shelf components and control the MOSFET through its gates with a MOSFET driver and a function generator which creates a PWM signal, then we can see that by varying the duty cycle, we can create a variable boosted output voltage. But as soon as I either increase slash decrease the input voltage or change the load on the outputs, the output voltage does not stay stable because our system does not have a feedback system yet. To change that, let's have a closer look at this pre-made boost converter circuit that you can get for cheap on eBay. If we inspect the main IC under the microscope, then we can read B6285, which after a bit of googling, turns out to be a MT3608 boost converter IC, that only requires a minimum of external components to function properly. And by having a closer look at its functional block diagram, we can kind of assume its functional principle. But to make things even easier, I will be using this article from Maxim Integrated as a base for my own boost converter. First off, we need to build a voltage divider on the output, which feeds into the inverting input of a differential op -amp configuration. That means, since we got a constant voltage reference on the non-inverting inputs, that the output voltage will be the reference voltage subtracted by the feedback voltage of the boost converter. Later I will be using a TL431 in series with a 1 kilo ohm resistor in order to create a stable 2.495V reference voltage, which stays constant even when the input voltage of the circuit varies. Because of the 2.495V voltage limit at the non-inverting inputs, the voltage at the inverting input should not be higher than that. So I created my voltage divider from a 100 kilo ohm and 10 kilo ohm resistor and a 10 kilo ohm trimmer. This way we would get a 2.5 volt voltage drop across the trimmer at the maximum output voltage of 30 volts. Next, this resultant error voltage feeds into the non-inverting input of a comparator while the inverting input of the comparator is connected to a ramp oscillator that creates a triangle voltage. That means whenever the error voltage is lower than the triangle voltage, the output of the comparator is connected to ground. And whenever the error voltage is higher than the triangle voltage, the output is connected to VCC, which consequently creates a PWM signal which will control our MOSFET. At this point, you might be asking yourself, how does this setup add the feedback functionality? 
Well, let's imagine we got a constant voltage of 15 volts at the outputs. And now we add a resistor in parallel, which would obviously draw more current on the outputs. Since the duty cycle is not adjusted yet, the output voltage would decrease, which means the feedback voltage would decrease as well. This on the other hand means that the arrow voltage will increase, and thus the time the arrow voltage is higher than the triangle voltage becomes longer as well, which ultimately means that the duty cycle increases, and thus the initially targeted output voltage would get sustained. Pretty smart I would say. And with this design guideline in mind, I created an appropriate schematic, mainly consisting of two rail-to-rail -rail op amps and a TC4420 MOSFET driver, which together form a triangle generator, a differential op amp configuration and a comparator, which controls the MOSFET driver and thus the MOSFETs. And once the schematic was complete, I began connecting all the components to one another according to the schematic on a breadboard, which due to the rather big number of necessary components, took quite a while. But as soon as I was done creating the circuit, I powered it up and adjusted the creator triangle voltage with the two potentiometers, so that it stretches perfectly between the 0 volts and 2.5 volts voltage level. That adjustment then basically made the boost converter ready to use, which as you can see it did work somehow. But due to the unpredictable nature of a breadboard circuit, it was not a usable boost converter yet. So to make sure that the circuit really does work without a problem, I assembled it once again on a piece of perfboard, which did get rid of loose connection problems and unwanted parasitic capacitances. And after 2 hours of soldering, the circuit was complete. And after the power up and once again adjusting the triangle voltage, it was time for a proper testing session. As you can see, adjusting the output voltage is possible with the output trimmer. And by increasing slash decreasing the input voltage, the duty cycle of the MOSFET got decreased slash increased. Which means the output voltage stayed almost constant. And as expected, by changing the output loads, the voltage can also decently sustain its constant level. But please, do not think that this circuit is flawless. There were in fact a couple of weird problems. Which means that in case you want to build your own boost converter, I would still recommend the microcontroller version. Or a version built around a simple switch IC. So the conclusion of the initial question is, yes. Of course you can create a boost converter without a microcontroller. But look at how much more components were required. And extending the functionality of such a circuit will always be easier to accomplish with a microcontroller. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If so, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Stay creative and I will see you next time.